Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you an extremely, extremely fast mapping build. It's really a surprise to me that not everyone is playing this build. Seriously, like everyone should be playing this build if you're interested in just mapping fast, which is one of the better currency strategies this league, simply just running through the map, making the loot from the boss, which can be like synthesis maps, guardian maps, all that stuff, invitations, uh, different currency drops, and then getting the acres or embers by just qu quickly killing the massive packs of influence monsters, right? Just quickly running through the map allows you to also get a lot of fragments of these uh, arch nemesis mods because they are kind of limited of how many per map can drop so you want to do a large number of maps rather than maps with lots of monsters in them so this is the perfect build to do this you can clear strand in less than a minute killing everything in it killing the boss it's an absolutely ridiculously quick build like people i posted uh, recently a tweet saying people are playing uh Poison Spectral Helix. Meanwhile, I'm playing PoE 2077 because it honestly feels like this once you get all the juice going. So what is this build? How is it so fast? Why am I playing this? So first of all, the idea for the build is uh, very, very simple. We are combining a couple of extremely cheesy and abusive mechanics available in this league. One of them is the Shrine Abuse and one of them is the Soul Thirst Abuse, right? So Soul Thirst on its own would carry this. Shrines on its own would be a little bit harder. Shrines are a little bit better the longer the map gets, but Soul Thirst is better the shorter the map gets. So the sweet spot is like one minute long map, click a couple shrines and you're absolutely blasting. Uh, so the Soul Thirst is basically a belt that costs 2c and it gives you soul eater for the duration of any flask and because we are able to roll our flasks in a way where they last actually more than a minute then we are able to keep keep soul eater for that long this will give us uh like a thousand two thousand three thousand increased attack and cast speed because of that we really want to uh, use uh, a character that uses an attack skill for mobility or cast speed for mobility so we're using shield charge you could also use lightning warp but shield charge by default is already good so it's just gonna be much better so either shield charge or lightning warp for mobility is really good and then we're using some kind of a skill that scales with attack or, or cast speed the best ones for that are for example ethereal knives so ek is really good for that and also spark is really good for that because with the new jewel with the new threshold jewel you can actually make this uh, cast in a circle around you kind of like the old like the old ek jewel or the current ek jewel as well you make them uh, cast in a circle and therefore you don't have to aim anything so no aiming running at the speed of light and basically just killing everything around you right uh, so uh, i'll talk i'll talk about in a moment how to get your flasks to last this long and then we're running goal which gives us the uh, smaller shrines and also a bigger effect of shrines on us and longer duration of shrines of us and we're stacking this with the same nodes on the passive skill tree which give us uh, extra like shrine duration extra effects of shrine uh, 30 percent increased effect of shrine shrines grant a random additional shrine effect so basically every shrine that you pick up is like a double shrine uh, increased duration so they last the whole map it's really insane insanely powerful um, so let's talk about the soul thirst and how you are actually going to make uh, the flasks last this long because it's actually ridiculous right so first of all the important thing are the flasks so the flasks that you want to use are the ones that have base duration of at least eight seconds those would be the ruby sapphire topaz and then there is also the percent evasion and percent uh, armor so i think that's like basalt not ba yeah, basalt and then um stibnite right those those flasks as well as the bismuth flask bismuth is the longest right eight and a half seconds then you want to make sure you quality them ideally you quality them to 28 percent you do that with hillock in the research and then you uh, roll them for increased duration which goes up to 40 percent and in order to have that t1 roll experimenters you need item level 84 flasks at least so get item level 84 flasks uh 
alterations, spam them to T1, you can then divine them to 40% if you want, and then get whatever you want on the suffix if you can. I currently have like just very basic requirement, I don't even have them, them 28 quality, I don't have them perfectly rolled, they're just like decent, right? Um, and then you also want to use the orbs, which are called uh, enkindling orbs, and you use the enkindling orbs on them to uh, get the increased duration, which can go up to 100%. So ideally, you want 100% increased duration on that as well. That's when it comes to flasks. Um, we have a life flask still, because uh, it's still a little bit tricky, but later on, the idea is to drop that flask have like a defensive flask here and uh, rely simply on a leech, on a regen and on life on hit to heal ourselves. And that's gonna be able to keep us up no matter what and then we won't need the flask. Uh, let's talk about the passive skill tree that we need in order to get these flasks uh, so long. So there are the nodes for uh, flask duration here. So we pick flask, increase flask effect duration those nodes here. We also pick flasks applied to you have 10% increased effect, which is very, very nice um, because it gives us the the less fire called lightning damage taken is also um, improved, right? So we're actually taking even less damage. Um, and then we've got a druidic right, 20% flask duration. And we got two of these small nodes. Each of these is 10% flask effect duration. And then you need pretty much at least like two uh, medium cluster jewels and these medium cluster jewels are um, the cluster jewels that grant you 6% increased flask duration and you want to have 25% increased effect on them and only one notable distilled perfection. Uh, this means that each of these grants us 7% increased, increased flask effect duration plus this 10% from distilled wisdom, right? So we get that. And then on top of that, we also are running survival instincts. Survival instincts give us 50% uh, increased flask effect duration, right? That's another thing that we're running. And that's basically it. If you wanna go crazy, uh, you could grab another set of these uh, flask cluster jewels here, but it's absolutely not necessary. One minute flasks should be enough to clear uh, a map like that is good for this build, right? Because of course you don't want to run any map. You don't want to run cells or something like that. You want to run a map that is good for shield charging or for lightning warp if you're using that and uh, that's going to be ideal for us. Um, so the rest of the build, uh, when it comes to, to the spark, is absolutely not set in stone. This is just a basic idea that I went with. This can be completely changed, but what I went for is something that can abuse, like having in it's insanely good clear, so you don't have to aim, so you just can quickly shield charge and shoot everywhere. So spark is really good for that. Um, and then also something that can abuse like different damage scaling mechanics as well as get even more clear from the explode. So uh, this is not necessary. In order to just start with the build, all you need is like goal and soul thirst. That's it. And the uh, two cluster jewels uh, and some flasks, right? That's the important part. But then you can also choose to do it in many different ways. You can choose to play many different builds with this as long as it scales with attack speed or cast speed. Um, so for the Impulsa Explode, we're actually going with the new implicit mode. Shocks you inflict spread to other enemies in a radius of 14. So you can get that from these new influences. This is from Searing Exarch uh, Implicit Modifier. So with the red ones, you can roll this. And it, because of that, we we don't have to roll the, um, what's it called? We don't have to roll the actual, uh, uh, we don't have to use the actual unique, right? Because uh, people use the unique gloves before, but now we can actually just use this, right? And we can roll whatever you want or whatever you want on that. So ideally you'd want like life, calling strike, unnerve on hit, right? And uh, like maybe chaos rest because resistances are absolutely not necessary. If you look, if I press all of my flasks right now, if you look at the defense stuff, I press all of my flasks, I have way more resistances than I need, right? I can have elemental weakness on me and I still have like 100 resists to go, right? like I have so many resistances. So the only resist you need is Chaos Rest, right? So on all of your gear that you have, which is the shield, the amulet, the ring, the gloves, uh, or any other like jewels, you only need Chaos Rest. You don't need any of the elemental resistances because you can completely rely on resistances from flasks just as if you were playing a uh, mage blood build because your flasks will last for the entire map. You can use them twice as well. So if you run out of them, you, ha you literally have two minutes 
where you have those flasks up no matter what, right? So this is perfectly acceptable to have zero elemental resistances on your gear, right? And you can completely just rely on the flasks to do that job. Um, so that's how, ex how uh, we get explode, right? If you don't have that, don't worry, you can simply buy sextants with a gloom shrine, right? And have explode that way if you want. Um, then we've got the Voidwalker boots for Pierce and we're playing the Raiders so we have uh, phasing constantly so we always have Pierce even before we start clearing anything. Um, we also run Call of the Brotherhood in order to convert a portion of our lightning damage to cold and that way we can take advantage of the Trinity support as well as these insane nodes uh, Sadist, right? So Sadist gives us 60% increased elemental damage because we have this one little hip hypnotic eye jewel that gives us a little bit of fire damage to spells and that means we are chilling we are shocking and we are igniting right and with chill shock and ignite uh, applied recently we're getting 60 percent increased damage here uh, and here i will link the pob in the description although keep in mind that this build is nowhere near its final version everything can be improved it does very little damage right now um, and it's difficult to kill bosses if you don't have uh, all of the stacks so the build needs to be changed and improved but the whole idea is i can clear maps in less than one minute so i'm gonna be able to farm currency very very quickly for whatever improvements i need um, something that i recommend is getting like this kind of a ring so i just awakened orbed um, a shaper ring and a hunter ring that have elemental weakness on hit with life gained on hit uh, for spells which is a difficult mod to get outside of a watcher's eye and then we need minus uh, cost on the uh, jewelry right so i got minus cost here minus cost here i'm running uh, replica conquerors efficiency and i'm running watcher's eye with minus cost while affected by clarity right so those things are uh, really helpful because then you won't be limited by mana you can also use other things you can use the flask uh, you can use val clarity you can use all kinds of different things that will allow you to uh, lower the mana cost of your skill so that you can just spam it while you while you got like 250 casts per second funny enough somewhere in this video you will see footage of uh, when i have so many stacks of the soul eater as well as i think like echo shrine or speed shrine and i have actually more than 250 casts per second and that means the animations get so fast that they don't play anymore like the animation takes less than one frame in the game engine for the next animation to play because i think it's like 240 cap or something so if you have more than 240 animations per second they don't play anymore your character is just standing there and things are flying you know and it's really really hilarious to see so it's an extremely extremely fast build i am i'm really surprised that not everybody is doing this it it makes the league so fun because you can run through maps so insanely quickly and i definitely recommend a strict strict loot filter for this because you don't want to be sitting there picking up alteration orbs or something uh when you're going this fast you really want to go for the big drops you really want to go for things that you're actually selling and the maps that you need so that's it uh later on i'll probably make like a better build guide for this when i actually finish the build when it's gonna be like strong enough to run more juiced maps with delirium on them and stuff like that that's gonna be really really fun to do uh, but that's it for now thank you guys for watching enjoy the build uh buy all the cluster jewels before they get too expensive or roll them yourself and make money on everybody who's gonna play this build uh, take care and see you next time bye bye